At this point, we've learned how to represent 2D dynamics problems using vector diagrams and a little trigonometry, a great method for many problems. Given that, we find that some 2D dynamics problems are most easily solved by using vector components, like we used for 2D kinematics problems. Both methods work for any problem, but sometimes one method proves to be a bit easier, or more for your preference. In this tutorial, we'll consider a 2D dynamics problem and discuss how it might be solved using the trig vector method and then using the component method. You'll be able to consider which method looks like a better option, making you a more flexible problem solver. Our example. We have FA equals 5 newtons east and FB equals 3 newtons northeast. Let's review and first solve it using our trig vector methods. Our free body diagram would look like this. FA equals 5 newtons to the right and FB equals 3 newtons up and right at 45 degrees. Again, F net equals MA and our F net is the addition of our forces. FA plus FB in this case, a vector addition. Our vector diagram would show 5 newtons to the right and then tip to tail 3 newtons up and right. The resultant vector or F net would be from the start of the vector addition to the end as usual. Taking a look at our vector diagram, we could determine that our angle here is 90 degrees plus 45 degrees or 135 degrees. It's not a right triangle. So we pull out our cosine law and sine law. The cosine law can be used to determine the magnitude of the resultant, or F net, and the sine law can be used to determine the direction of the F net. In this case, the net force would be 7.4 newtons at 17 degrees north of east. Same problem, but this time let's use the component method. Using components, we still start with a good free body diagram. FA equals 5 newtons to the right and FB equals 3 newtons up and right. Again, F net equals MA. Same thing to this point, but here's where we deviate a bit. In this case, we'll split everything into two dimensions, along the x-axis and along the y-axis. Now, our F net x along the x-axis equals FA, which is entirely in the X direction, and the X component of FB, which we can call FBX. They're both pointing to the right, so they'll both be positive. Recognizing that FA equals 5 newtons and FBX is 3 cos 45, we get an F net X, or an X component of our F net, being 7.1 newtons. Now let's switch to the y direction or the y component of F net. So F net y, well, FA is only in the x direction. So there's no component in the y. So we can skip that. So let's just look at FB. FBY, the component of FB in the y direction, is 3 sine 45. And we get an F net y of 2.1 newtons. Our last step is to combine the F net X and F net Y to get our final F net. We can draw a vector addition to combine them. F net X plus tail to head F net Y and our resultant F net goes from the start of the vector addition to the end. So Pythagorean theorem allows us to determine the magnitude of F net. 7.4 newtons which exactly matches our previous result. For the direction of F net, we can use our tan ratio, and we see that theta equals 17 degrees, which also exactly matches our previous result. Again, arriving at a final answer of F net equals 7.4 newtons at 17 degrees north of east. In this tutorial, we looked at a 2D dynamics problem and solved it using two different methods. First, the vector trig method, and then the component method. We saw that both methods worked perfectly well and resulted in the same answer. 
you can feel confident using either method to solve a problem. So which method should you choose? It really takes some practice to determine which method is best for various cases, but here are some tips to consider. If you have more than two forces involved and a resulting acceleration, or F-net, then you'll often have more than three sides on your vector diagram. So it's no longer a triangle, and thus you might find that component method might be easier. In an equilibrium problem, you can have three forces, as there's no resultant acceleration, or no F-net. So in an equilibrium problem, you can have up to three forces before it's no longer a triangle. Thus, for an equilibrium problem, if you have over three forces involved, then the components might be easier. In a case like a box on a floor or on a ramp, we have the advantage that we know that the direction of F-net will be along the surface. Therefore, components might be easier if we set our axes up along the surface and perpendicular to it. With these tips in mind, practice with a variety of dynamics problems and you'll get proficient at choosing the best tools for each problem.